Welcome to the first Focal Plane Reviews, the Gray Birch Solutions LVR Shrike 1022. My name is Chris. Follow along as we review one of Canada's newest entries into the semi-automatic rimfire genre. Gray Birch Solutions is a custom rifle company who started entering the market in 2020, starting with several different 1022 receivers and carbon fiber barrels. In the last year and a bit, Gray Birch has expanded their lineup to include bolt assemblies, a chassis, muzzle devices, and more recently what they call the Fusion, a proprietary barrel and receiver with a barrel nut instead of a conventional 1022 V-block mating the barrel with the receiver. I first received the LDR Shrike receiver and barrel in mid-2020, shortly after they were released. I subsequently added their bolt assembly, V-block, and foundation chassis as they were released throughout 2020 and early 2021. Although this is the rifle I've done all my testing with, it is important to note that as of the release of this review, Grey Birch is no longer making standard 1022 compatible receivers or barrels, having replaced both of these with their proprietary fusion barrel and receiver. I have not acquired one of those, so this review will stick strictly to the Shrike model that is swappable with standard 1022 parts. I won't bore anyone with takedown videos or overblown specs that most people familiar with 1022 platforms will already be familiar with. Instead, I'll stick with the differences that I've seen between the standard Ruger 1022 and the build that I've made with Grey Birch. For posterity, my build uses a Ruger BX trigger pack and a standard rubberized AR grip. I've used both a Vortex Strike Eagle 1-8 and a Vortex Venom 5-25 scope while testing this rifle. Firstly, the finish work on the LDR Shrike receiver is pretty standard. That is to say that it's pretty polished and well finished. It's aluminum, as almost all 1022 receivers are, and although its fit and finish are quite good, I can't say that it's remarkable beyond other custom 1022 receivers, except that Grey Birch has opted for an unfinished aluminum look with a clear anodizing that does look pretty snazzy compared to many other receivers. The LDR model comes with an integrated Picatinny rail with a 20 MOA rise, which is nice when dialing out to further distances. I do have to mention that I would prefer a bit more rise on the rail for even longer distances. Even using my Vortex Venom 5-25 with 85 MOA elevation travel, I come up with about 6 MOA short while maxing out my turret while shooting at 300 meters. Thankfully, the MOA drop reticle can still get me there, and rings could add extra rise too, but I prefer another 10 MOA on the rail uh, for a total of 30 MOA, and I've heard other reviewers make the same comment. Their foundation chassis is light, skeletonized, adjustable in both length of pole and cheek height, and has the same clear anodizing as the receivers. It takes AR platform pistol grips and includes both M-lock slots on the sides and bottom, and an ARCA rail for any precision shooters out there. There's even an ambidextrous QD cup partway down the back of the rear stock. The foundation comes with a pair of screws that are designed to be inserted near the back top of the receiver and screwed in to put pressure on the trigger housing in an attempt to counter barrel droop common with the 1022. On its face, I thought this was a fantastic idea. Unfortunately, in practice, it is next to impossible to apply these screws once your scope is mounted to your rifle, making the feature a little bit more difficult to utilize than I would like. If I had their RDR receiver with their integrated red dot RMR mount instead of a Picatinny rail, this would probably be a great feature because the scope wouldn't be in the way. Yes, you can remove your scope, screw in the reinforcement, and remount and re-zero your scope, but truthfully it hasn't seemed worth the hassle for me. In any case, barrel droop has been no factor with this rifle anyway. I like that they have a detachable modular foregrip that just screws into the front of the chassis with two different length options now, but especially now that they have their fusion barrel nut system, I have to wonder what it would look like with a full handguard over the free floating barrel. Still, if I were to buy just one GVS product to fit an existing 1022 build, it would be the foundation chassis. For the most part, it's a well-designed, well-thought-out, modular chassis that works very well with the 1022 platform, and it's finished very well. The whole package is so well-balanced that you can shoot it like a pistol, if you were weird enough to want to try such a thing. I do have to mention, however, that mine is a prototype with a fixed stock and a shorter forestock, and nowadays you can get with the foundation, a folding stock, and a longer forestock. 
I originally ran this receiver with my 45-year-old stock Ruger bolt from the 70s. And while the bolt has always worked flawlessly in its 45-year-old stock receiver, these two parts did not work well with each other. That short period of time was marked with failures to eject regularly and with less than stellar accuracy. As the bolt wore into the aluminum receiver, I was left with some well-marred and dented aluminum in my new LDR receiver, and after only about a month, I removed the bolt out of concerns that I was going to ruin the new receiver, even though I hadn't received my Grey Birch bolt yet. This isn't to say that the Grey Birch receivers are incompatible with other brands of bolts. I am aware of several folks who are using Grey Birch receivers with newer Ruger bolts, or even other custom bolts such as KID, without any issues. My particular receiver just didn't like my particular old man bolt, probably because of how sloppy the bolt is due to its age. In hindsight, it's kind of like Madonna at 50 years old trying to wear the same clothes that 20-something internet models on TikTok are fitting into. It's better just not to do it. Thankfully, when I did receive the Greybirds bolt, it fit well and the gun has run flawlessly ever since. In fact, in the close to 10,000 rounds that I and others have put through this rifle in the last year, I have not had a single malfunction that can be attributed to the reliability of the rifle since mating the GBS bolt with their GBS receiver. In fact, I tried to see how long the rifle could go without being cleaned, and it made it through several months, more than a thousand rounds, and four Project Maple Seed events, some back to back, before it had a single malfunction. Even then, some ballastol kept it in the game for the remainder of the day before requiring a thorough cleaning that evening. Compared to a standard Ruger 18.5 inch barrel, the GBS 16.1 inch carbon fiber barrel is a marked improvement. Being nearly 2.5 inches shorter, it only weighs about 6 ounces less, but it is a much thicker diameter barrel than a standard 1022 and a much more accurate one as well. At shorter distances, the biggest difference that I noticed was that cheaper ammo like Federal Blue Box and Winchester M22 was more forgiving for accuracy than when shot out of a standard Ruger barrel. The biggest difference came for me at the 100 meter range and beyond. Subsonic ammo always shoots better than it for me at 100 meters and with decent quality ammo like Ely Action, the GBS rifle can shoot between one and one and a quarter MOA consistently. At 200 meters, that spread opens up a little bit to around 2 MOA. 300 meters is the longest that I've shot this rifle, and at this distance, the 1,095 foot per second muzzle velocity of Ely Action is really tested. Yet, I can still maintain a regular 3.5 MOA spread consistently, sometimes a little bit less, which for a 1022 is quite impressive in my opinion. GBS has posted pictures on their social media showing close to the same with premium RWS ammunition out to 150 meters. GBS claims to build their bolt with tighter headspace tolerances than a standard Ruger bolt, starting with a bench chamber spec and reducing the headspace tolerances to 0.002 inches. I don't claim to know a whole lot about the sporter specs of a standard Ruger bolt versus a bench chamber, but all the nerds out there will understand what this means. Whether this really makes a difference at these longer 22 rimfire distances or not, I can't say, but I'm also not going to look this gift horse in the mouth. The new fusion system may be even more accurate, but I ain't got one so I can't speak to it. I can't say that there aren't 1022 builds available that are just as accurate or maybe even just as reliable. The 1022 aftermarket is pretty saturated and there's a lot of good quality products available. What I can say is that this rifle, for the Canadian market, is distributed, sold, shipped, and priced in a country in country at a very competitive price compared to some custom 1022 platforms such as Volkwurzen. As I publish this review, the new Fusion LDR complete rifle is available for just under $1,400 before theft and shipping. To sum it up, I can genuinely recommend this rifle system for a wide variety of rimfire rifle shooters. Over the last year, I've tested everything under the sun from shotguns, precision centerfire rifles, semi-auto centerfire rifles, and everything in between. And I have genuinely enjoyed this rifle more than any other that I've shot. I've talked about it so much that I've been dubbed Private Rimfire by some listener on our podcast. I think that 
Rimfire enthusiasts looking for a custom build or a custom complete rifle will enjoy the extreme quality of these components. The hobbyist will love the accuracy from what is typically thought to be reserved for bolt action 22s, and the small game hunter will love the light, well balanced package that is so easily carried in the wild, designed with so many easy sling and carry options, and very reliable for when you don't want that rabbit to get away. Do be aware that with the release of the new Fusion system, GBS is no longer offering a complete 1022 compatible experience, and if you want their receiver or their barrel, they come as a package or not at all. If I had one criticism, it would be to suggest that they continue offering stock 1022 compatible barrels and receivers as well as their proprietary Fusion package, but hey, you can't have it all. Thanks for joining me on this dive into the Greybird Solutions LDR Shrike 1022 rifle. We'll see you next time. Until then, live, laugh, and reload. <laughs>